Hi, I'm Sarah and Alvin. I am Byron's new graduate student at Oregon State University. Um, I went to Colby College in Maine and got a Bachelor's of Arts in Biology. And then before that, I went to Brookline High School in Brookline, Massachusetts. So as Byron's new graduate student, I am first of all responsible for staying at Tulick the whole summer. I've been here two weeks, I'll be here eight more. Um, I'm, so I'm here for the whole summer, collecting samples weekly um, at various sites um, so that we have this whole summer record of the microbial communities around Tulick. Um, so that's my job for the summer. And then my role in the project after that is a little bit to be determined. I have to come up with some questions, um, which will ultimately, uh, I will try to answer those questions in a thesis, uh, which I'll put together over the next two years. Um, but they'll have something to do with the uh, microbial diversity in the, in the lakes um, and the, the fresh water in, around Tulick. Um, and, and what factors control that diversity. So basically, what species are in this fresh water, what are they doing, and why? I was always really indecisive. I never was one of those. Uh, I think the only time I ever outright declared a job I wanted was when I was like, six maybe and I really wanted to be a pilot like an airplane pilot like commercial airlines I don't know why um, because airplanes scare me now but I'd say there was always this kind of thought in the back of my brain that I sometimes outright expressed sometimes kind of reluctantly expressed that I wanted to be a teacher um, I remember when I was in like fifth grade I remember saying I could really picture myself being a fifth grade teacher. And then eighth grade, I said, oh no, how could I be a fifth grade teacher? I definitely want to be an eighth grade teacher. By high school, I, you know, I could totally imagine myself being a high school teacher. It was never something I said for sure that I wanted to do, but it was always a thought in the back of my brain that I could enjoy doing that. I still don't know exactly what I want to do, but I, I know that teaching should be a part of that because I do really enjoy teaching. Basically, I love bacteria. I just think bacteria rule the world. I, I don't just think that, they do. They rule the world. They, we, would not, we would not be on this planet without them. And so for my, um, my thesis that I did in college, I really wanted to incorporate bacteria into my project. Um, but I worked in a lab that researched frogs and researched why frogs around the world are dying from this disease called chytrid or it's a fungus called chytrid um, the disease is chytridiomycosis um, and we were looking at lots of different um, kind of immune defenses that that the frogs um, had to defend themselves against this fungus that attacked their skin. It attacks their skin and they breathe through their skin so then their skin hardens up and they eventually die of cardiac arrest. So it's no good. We're researching how they can defend themselves from this disease. And I had read some material that suggested that the bacteria that live on frog skin actually some of it is good bacteria and it protects the frog from this fungus, from this skin disease. And I want to do my research on that. And, and I ended up going out in Maine, collecting lots of frogs, and it was a lot of work, but in a nutshell, I, I ended up isolating a lot of bacteria that it turned out um, produced these compounds that, that in fact would not let this disease grow. Um, and so I tested in the lab, you know, I, I grew the fungus and the bac each bacteria together in the lab and, you know, a lot of the bacteria just prevented the fungus from growing at all. Um, so that was, that was a huge part of it. And then, um, and then I also tried to find out who those bacteria were that were protecting those frogs. So that was kind of the second part of it. I love 
uh, spending time with friends. Um, I just moved to the West Coast where I don't know that many people and a lot of my friends are back East. So uh, in the last few weeks, now that I've been in, on the West Coast without, without many friends, I've, I've been spending a lot of times outdoors. I, I really like, um, like going for runs and going for hikes. Um, and I, I've been reading been teaching myself how to cook. That's a new hobby of mine. I'm, I used to be terrible at cooking. Now I'm now I'm okay following recipes at least. Getting better. Um, it's like camp for scientists. I really think it's like summer camp. I I was not expecting it to feel this way, but um, it just so I guess the social aspect of Tulik I think is really the best part because people come back summer after summer they're always so excited to come back and not just to hang out with friends but I'm talking the people who run the labs are excited to come back because this is where they get all their collaboration done you know they may email with their collaborators across the country all year long and write papers with them via email and see them at conferences occasionally but all summer long they're hanging out in the same room eating meals together, just bouncing ideas off each other. So I think from from the PIs, the principal investigators who run the labs, all the way down to the people who are here for the first time, it's it's just like summer camp for nerds. Like every, you know, hanging out in the dining hall, you know, going on hikes together. It's, it's really social, all-inclusive. Everyone's friendly. Everyone knows each other. It's like this little this mini community, very much like summer camp. But you really, really couldn't live without them. We think of bacteria as these nasty things because there's a few that cause disease, but most of them are helping you digest your food. They are, they are cycling the nutrients in, on the planet. So, so the oxygen you breathe, half the oxygen that you breathe, would not be here without these cyanobacteria that live in the ocean. All the nitrogen that's in the proteins in your body, pretty much your whole body is made of protein, all that nitrogen would not be in biological form, in the form that you can access and eat, without bacteria. Most of the nitrogen in the world is in the air. 77% of nitrogen or something is in the air. But we can't breathe that in and turn it into protein. We have to wait for bacteria to pre breathe that nitrogen in, turn it into this biological form of nitrogen, and then slowly let that nitrogen process up the food chain until we can eat it and turn it into protein. So we certainly would not be alive without bacteria, but really, I mean, nothing living would be alive without bacteria, and the planet would be a very different place. Just about how they're crucial to human health. Um, they, you know people who have who have kind of disrupted what they're calling microbiomes or the, the microbiome is is the the microbes that live inside of you and people who have disrupted microbiomes have really really terrible diseases um, and they're, they're linking all these diseases to kind of altered microbiomes like autism obesity um, uh, you know Crohn's disease, ev there's so many, depression, um, everything's now, you know, ev everyone's realizing how important the microbes in your own body are to your health, um, and how much we, we haven't realized that we've been using all these antibiotics, and we've uh, been sterilizing our water, and now we're realizing maybe we actually should be taking advantage of these bacteria rather than, you know, starting this warfare against them so um, anyway they're really bacteria are really crucial to human health they're really crucial to the the cycling of nutrients on this planet nutrients that we need and nutrients that the entire um, you know biome uh, all the biology on this planet needs and and they're and they grow really fast you can see them evolve because they evolve over they, you know, E. coli cells divide every 20 minutes. So, you know, you can see evolution in action. You can't see that with with humans because our generations are much longer. So they're really fun to study for a lot of reasons, and they're really, really important to this world.
They're so cool. <laughs>